right, so we're on the road today in the old F100. We got all our uh, vehicle resurrection tools. So we got a 67 or 66 or 68, somewhere in there, uh, Jeep that we're gonna try and bring back to life. Now it's like a military unit. It's kind of unique. It's like a 24 volt setup. Um, I don't really know a whole lot about it. So um, should be interesting. So rolling down the road here, we should be there in about 30 minutes and get a good look at this thing. finally finding our way here. A little bit tricky to find this back alleyway. Apparently it's inside this garage, so get parked here and take a look. Holy crap, that is not what I expected. <laughs> Man, I thought I was going to see some like VW thing type uh, rig this is definitely a this is definitely a military truck if I've ever seen one kind of weird painted white whoa <laughs> I don't even know what that is I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research here but um, that's definitely unique not what I expected in the least all right so getting rolling on this thing um, we've started to get things in position to work on it. So I don't know a lot of the details of the unit in particular as far as the parts, pieces, and the, the makeup of it, but it's definitely a military-grade rig. Um, now, a little bit of the backstory on this thing. A guy had it in storage for God knows how long, and um, he ended up losing his storage spot and he uh, took it into the local swap meet and these guys uh, picked it up quite a few years back. It sat outside for a while after that, um, but now it's here in the garage. So it hasn't run for um, God knows how long. A lot of the rubber hoses and everything are dry rotted. Uh, so we're gonna have to work through that. At least they did drain the radiator. So someone was looking to uh, keep it around. Now apparently the rig only has 6,000 miles on it or so and with the body on the thing and being here in Iowa, you know, you'd, you'd think that that's pretty accurate. It's in good shape from, you know, being from 63 or so. Obviously it was again repainted uh, white. So I'm sure a lot of these went to surplus like this one. And if you can kind of see a washed out civil defense tag there. So who knows if a fire department used it or what, but, um, Definitely unique. You can see the original color was green here. Um, you know, your standard military colors. So the parts and pieces are pretty rare for this guy. We're finding out. Um, and this engine was set up to be completely waterproof where it could go underwater. I mean, if you just look at these, these plug wires and everything, it's definitely beefy military stuff. Our fuel pump and, you know, I'm not even sure what this guy is down here. We'll just have to... Uh, work through it but this is a 230 tornado engine i'm not sure if uh this rig or i guess this engine was put into civilian models i'd assume so but uh, definitely unique so it is a 24 volt unit and we uh are getting the batteries all set up to go in it and to see if it will at least crank make sure the engine isn't seized so that we can work through that but obviously all the terminals were all corroded out so <clears throat> we're going to get that rectified. We can't really get in there with a wrench to turn it over, so hopefully we can just bump the thing. And I assume since it was stored inside most of its life, it should be free. Uh, some other interesting parts and pieces. This is literally the lock to the vehicle. The rest of everything else is um, just switches. There's technically no key, so that's kind of interesting. We're going to have to look in the user's manual to figure out how to operate <laughs> this rig with all the levers and what have you. So anyway, with that, um, when our parts come in here, we'll get jumping into this thing and working through it. Obviously parts are pretty darn scarce, a lot of new old stock, so this should be interesting. But as you see here, 
It's our favorite carburetor, the Holly unit. So good old Holly one barrel. So I'm confident if this thing cranks, um, we can make it do something. So let's jump right in. All right, so obviously an engine only needs about four things to run fuel, air, spark, and compression. So if all of our engine internals are good, which I'm hopeful, then it really comes down to just getting air into the engine, fuel into the engine in the proper mixture, and then uh, making sure we do have uh, fire on our spark plugs and our ignition timing is accurate and correct. So um, the first thing we're gonna obviously do is the carburetor sat for a long time, the ignition sat for a long time. We're gonna pull this guy off and um, test our coil out and all that like we normally do. Pull our carburetor off. We do have a new old stock rebuild kit for that, which is pretty neat. So we'll go ahead and work through that, guys. I'm sure the needle and seat and everything's all stuck on that guy. But just taking a look here, and we, we did um, source a uh, owner's manual, I guess, to a degree, or a parts manual. And just look at this uh, distributor. Super interesting, I'm assuming the coil is inside of this guy and it's got an o-ring everything to keep it nice and watertight so um, someone was really thinking they really had some good engineers on this in the day so um, i guess we're going to jump into our distributor first and when we get the batteries in we'll be able to see if we have spark yeah yeah quite a bit uh, way too much I should have had that truck behind me done a long time ago, but <laughs> I just wasn't around. I still got some stuff to do to it. Switch it over to an electric fuel pump setup that I want to run and some other stuff. On our old Ford, if it sat very long, the fuel would always drain out of it. So I have to open it. Drain back. Throw a little, a little in there. So I saw a guy one time, he just took, he added an electric, kind of put a, a Y on it, so he put an electric to prime it. And then once it's going, turn it off. I'll see if that would be. That's how I, how I used to have it. Did you have it set like that? Yep, until I put this roller engine in it that I have now where it didn't have a spot for my tackle pump. Now, right now we're working on getting our little watertight cover off of our distributor and coil. And as I'm working through this guy, you know, I'm just, the more I look at it, the more I see that everything is very specialized. So hopefully I'm with the 6,000 miles, most of the stuff is good. I assume our fuel pump's gonna be bad. And I'm not sure what goes on here, but it even says uh, wipers on it here. So I'm not sure if it used fuel or what for that. Um, we got our one barrel carburetor off here, obviously, but just check out this alternator or whatever you'd even want to call it. A uh, triple pulley unit there <laughs> runs all the way up here and has uh, a cooler on the electrical lines and up into this massive voltage regulator so super interesting i think we're going to dial it back here and just go through everything nice and slow i think we're going to get all our plugs out get some tranny fluid down there turn the crank over <coughs> by hand because this is just a really unique piece and we want to make sure that we <laughs> you know are sure not to damage everything or at least take every precaution we can so that <laughs> you know we don't end up doing so so with that, anyway, I'm trying to get this last screw out. It's pretty darn tight. Um, a lot of these uh, pieces here have uh, overhaul tags with a date code, which is super neat. So this thing was last touched, it looks like in 74. Someone overhauled this guy in the carburetor there, which um, you know we're gonna jump into. It was last overhauled in the early 70s as well. So um, it's holding true with the story, it's 6,000 miles. And, um, you know, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that this will do something. So we'll soon find out. All right. So what seemed like after <laughs> forever we got this guy out of here, it was seized in, but we were able to get it out with a pair of vice grips without uh, destroying our nifty little uh, overhaul tag or ripping our threads out. So that's pretty good. So we're down to just our last screw here on our little cover that houses our coil and our distributor cap. 
So we're, we're hopeful that it won't be all um, <coughs> corroded from sitting and getting moisture in it, but the point of this guy here, as you can see, it has a seal, so, and it looks like everything's in pretty good shape, really. Not, there's a little bit of corrosion from sitting, but not too bad. And our points look like they're not seized or um, corroded and stuck together. So we might be able to get away with this stuff, which is good because these parts are, again, super expensive. So if we can get the most life out of them possible, that'd be pretty ideal. So, so far this looks pretty good and we get some batteries, we'll go ahead and uh, test our ignition out and see where we're at. All right, so working through this thing right now, we're at a stopping point and I'll get to that in a bit. But uh, we got our batteries in, we've cleaned up the uh, terminals and replaced this guy over here so that we have good connection and everything seems to be good. Um, we went ahead and tested our coil out and got our multimeter here. And you've seen me do this many times before where we'll touch the positive lead. So let's flip the uh, power on on this guy. We finally figured out how to do that and figuring out <clears throat> kind of some of the electrical routing. So there we go, everything came alive. This is the starter here, but again, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, we don't want to go ahead and kick that over just yet. So now with uh, a line ran to the negative of our battery and touching the positive terminal on our coil, we're getting 24 volts. So we're at least getting 24 volts up to our coil and with how clean everything is and how free everything is, we still got our advance working on our distributor there. I'm pretty confident that we're gonna have <clears throat> at least spark up to our spark plug. So currently the holdup is, is our crank pulley here. So originally I was just gonna kick the engine over, but um, you know, I just, I just really don't wanna do that. I wanna go ahead and turn the engine over by hand just so we can verify none of the valves are stuck from sitting and it'd be a real shame to you know smack a piston into one of those guys so uh, what i want to do is of course turn the crank over by hand and then we'll feel if we hit anything and then we can assess uh, that situation if we come up on it um but right now we got a little bit of a clearance issue and my sockets really aren't uh, cutting it without pulling the whole radiator out so um, we're in a holding pattern for now but moving right along all right, so testing the spark on our coil here. Um, as you can see, we got 24 volts to our coil, our ground on our uh, multimeter run back to our battery. And now um, we're gonna see if our coil itself is any good. So um, with this weird orientation, usually I use a plug wire out of <clears throat> our discharge uh, terminal on our coil, but <laughs> instead we kind of with this weird setup with this guy we got to use a wire So anyway, we're going up here to a spark plug sitting on the fuel pump because you know, that's good and safe and um, Now if we Put our piece of wire here on our ground on our coil and we go ahead and interrupt that ground same as um, This is the same thing that your points essentially do it open opens and closes the ground We can see our spark plug firing there and it's pretty aggressive with this being a 24 volt unit but looks like everything's uh good to go um at least our coil works so um we got good plug wires i think we're going to be in good shape with our ignition all right so currently we're waiting for a couple sockets here to turn the crank and to pull a plug so we can verify that our coil and all that's in good shape uh, but right now we're working through the carburetor and I'm pretty encouraged um, on the internals of the engine. As you see, it's not all rusted up. So um, there hasn't been a lot of moisture. It's really gotten into this guy. Everything's free. And if you shake it around, you can hear that the float isn't seized. So it probably didn't sit with a bunch of gas. It got all varnished up. So we're going to jump into this guy and just make sure it's good. But I don't imagine we're going to come across anything too terrible inside here.
All right, so we got our carburetor all good and disassembled and we got our new old stock uh, rebuild unit here, which is a pretty neat piece of nostalgia as well with the, uh, the overhaul tag. But really, um, it looks all nice and clean inside the carburetor. Um, it did sit with fuel, but um, it must have been from back in the day before there was uh, alcohol in it because it looks pretty good. Obviously, we have some stuff to clean up here, but uh, this just goes to show why we always pull apart the carburetor. Um, our little O-ring here that goes around our needle and seat assembly is completely petrified. Most of our diaphragms on our Holly-style carburetor will be... Um, uh, pretty destroyed at this point. So again, really the carburetor's pretty clean. That's pretty encouraging. seat and our new needle and seat assembly we can see that the threads aren't near as deep uh, on our new assembly so what we're going to do is use our new needle and we got a new o-ring and um, our little uh, seated uh, aluminum gasket here so we're going to go ahead and run that in now uh, we just didn't have enough threads on our other unit now, another thing that's interesting about this carburetor in particular is it uses one of these foam style floats. Now, the issue with these is they do not hold up to uh, uh, alcohol in the gasoline. You have to use non-ethanol based gasoline or else they'll completely uh, melt. So currently, I think we'll probably end up taking a look to see if we can source a brass one of these guys. But for now, this is what we have. So um, we're going to put it back in there. But in this current configuration, we really wouldn't be able to use um, ethanol because again it would just melt that float in a hurry. So we couldn't find any chapstick which usually I use but I guess I guess there was some lip gloss around in a car so um, not mine mind you <laughs> that um, we're gonna go ahead and put on here so if we ever do uh, pull this float bowl off again um, our gasket's not gonna stick on one side or the other and hopefully you know we can <clears throat> pull our float bowl off a few times before it completely would destroy our gasket so it should give us a little bit more longevity out of it. All right so working down here on the crank we finally uh, got a socket that'll fit in here and dodge our radiator shroud. Um, one interesting piece if I haven't mentioned it yet is you know they really uh, overbuilt everything on these military rigs so they have this little retaining plate on here so that this uh, this crank bolt couldn't walk itself out, which is pretty cool. But now, um, kind of the issue is, is the crank itself, uh, I can't get it to turn. We went up and messed with the... Welcome to Elkhart, right? Um, couldn't get the crank to turn. I went up and I messed with the water pump. I messed with the, uh, the alternator. And it, it really seems like the engine is potentially stuck, so... It's just really not wanting to move, so I, I don't know what we're going to do here. I think it's, I think it's starting to loosen up. We can actually move the thing. Got an interesting noise in the back of this guy when we turn the engine clockwise. Kind of interesting, but so far we're about halfway around. Um, it's kind of a pain here as we got some nice clearance issues, so we can only go, you know, so far before we have to pop our wrench off and start again. But um, haven't felt any more, um, 
you know, it's not really grabbing anywhere. So, so far so good once it's been broke free. Tell us, honey, what, what did they tell you at Napa? <laughs> Just want any part of it. I, How I many know. different sizes did they have? They had a, at least two. Manufacturers that had stuff. All different lengths and orientations, I'm sure. So, yeah, it would be good to have one out of the thing. It's definitely tight. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the original one with only 6,000 miles. That is the coolest breaker bar I've ever seen. Why is that not more popular? Then snap on, can't sell you an extension. <laughs> There's probably a lot of truth to that. That's definitely a unique looking plug, isn't it? The good thing we're seeing is there's not any rust on the tip that would protrude into a the engine so it doesn't look like there was a whole lot of moisture at all that got in there look how clean um, <laughs> that watertight piece of the plug was obviously that must have worked pretty good in the day All right, so since we've never seen the vehicle run and these plug wires are super expensive, uh, normally we just go ahead and replace them, but being almost $300 a set, um, being this uh, watertight set, which you'll probably never see another um, setup like this unless you're working on a military vehicle, uh, we're just going through making sure they all uh, ohm out so there's no brakes in them. And so far, so good. Um, this is our last one here. And it looks like all of these are returning relatively a consistent uh, ohm rating. So I'm pretty confident that uh, these will be good enough to run our engine and we won't have to get new ones. So these, uh, these guys should be just fine for us. So here's just a closer look at our watertight uh, plug here. So it just goes right on inside. This nut slides up. Tightens her down, you know, until it locks in, and there you go. Like I said, pretty pretty interesting unit. You're not gonna find that in too many other places. So we pulled the plugs out of here, and they actually all looked pretty good. Usually, um, when you have moisture down the cylinder, your spark plug tip will have a little bit of rust on it as well. But I didn't see that on this guy, so I'm pretty encouraged. But all the same, um, we're just gonna. Take a little bit of extra caution here it's not as common of an engine as like a small block ford so um, right now we're just uh, making do with what we got for a funnel and running some of this tranny fluid down here to hopefully um you know if there is anything sticking in the cylinders hopefully this will help to free it up and if nothing else you know this engine sat for a long time so the extra little bit of lubrication on its first fire up really isn't going to hurt anything so Right now, you know, we don't put a lot in, just enough to get some in there. Then we'll rotate the engine around quite a few times. And I think that's good. So we'll let that sit for about a week. Um, turn the engine over a few times um, throughout. And, you know, like I said, I don't think there's anything that's uh, caught in the engine. I think we're, we were fighting something in the uh, flywheel clutch area. Um, but all in all, it seems pretty free, but better safe than sorry. So it definitely must have been the clutch plate or something hanging up on this guy. As you can see just how free it is. You can turn it over by hand now with the plugs out of it. I don't smash my hand off in there. I think it's good. So we'll just turn it over for a little bit and uh, let it sit for a week and then come back and we should be really close to trying to light the thing off. I think if you listen that ratcheting noise, 
I think that's the bearings in the alternator. It seems like where it's coming from is right there. 